I have three girls. Now you have three girls. Yeah, three oh wow! Girls. Yeah, girl dad. Problem with the oldest though, she thinks that he's my son. <laughs> she, she trained it. She's uh, actually yes. Mm. We're now gonna train a little bit, but but she's all into this woke nonsense. Oh, Are we yeah. familiar with woke? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, is this coming from? If it was not sad, it would be happier. Yeah. Very funny, actually. You said mm -hmm. you said she thinks she's a man. You said? She thinks she's a man. It's like a uh, real man. A a like are we of, talking like? Yes. Ah, because she, that's wokeness. Okay, so why addicted to her phone? She's being brainwashed basically yeah. six, seven, eight hours a day. You, how, how you feel you are, that you can, you can, you can be what you want to be. Where is she it's based? It's Miami, Netherlands. Netherlands. What does she do? <laughs> he. Dude, <laughs> Wait, you're talking about woke, like, like, like society? Yeah, no, talking like, about woke bullshit. This extremist left. She, um, thinks, he, she, she thinks she's a he. That is as woke as it becomes. This social media yeah. changed the world, bro. That's yeah. like, but, but they, they, it's. But you, as yeah, as a father, something. as a father, obviously you have love no matter what. But do you sit down and say, like, what, what, what direction or how do you handle that as a father? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> uh, patience, compassion. Uh, okay. Learning in that department, right? But. Um, I'm not gonna call her a he. That's just not. Okay. You know, I'm a yeah. fighter. Yeah. I will always fight. I'm not gonna go into this. I just don't believe that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I can respect you. I can. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Thing, but I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna. Yeah. But as a father, you I don't lose you. the love at all. You're still there no matter what to talk to um, lean on. Yeah, because I think we should not let go. If you let go, lost, yeah. right? You of course. Need to, actually as close as possible maybe that was a problem in the first place because mm -hmm. I'm in the states. I'm fighting. I'm doing you my thing. There. She's in the Netherlands. Yeah. Is the phone? Is the because I remember she was four when I looked at her and she was too much on the tablet. And I told the mother, She's too much on the tablet, we need to do something about it. And they're probably thinking, Yeah, 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 you're yo, big up, big up, chat, big up, pause. Yes, big up, big up, big up, big up, big up, appreciate you, appreciate you, appreciate you, Omar Ramos, Omar Ramos, appreciate you, my G, appreciate you, appreciate you, salute, salute, wherever you are. Big up Shades Cow. I see you. I see you. Thanks for making my day easier. I need to not be stingy and help my fellow ah. Africans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. African. No, Africans, by the way. We're Africans. We're the, oh, you know? Uh, you know. Africans, no Africans. You know. You know. You know. Big up my guy Shades Cow. <laughs> Big up Shades Cow. Over there doing your thing. So the tablet and now... This is uh, the result. He has a trans daughter. Yeah, he has a he has a daughter, but he's like, oh, uh, even gonna... if you even if you feel that way. So basically, he said, um, ah, and this word gets dicey. So he says, you know, I think he has three kids, and he goes, I have a trans daughter. I blame the tablet. He was because I wasn't there, and I'd come back. And so you know about all this, then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, I don't know. It's my job, Daddy. <laughs> so he would. You know what's funny about this? Him getting a little bit. This is the thing. Like, maybe it's a narcissism thing. Maybe he's been thin-skinned, but it's wild how his brain works. So in that interaction, he gets offended that Chin is surprised that he knows all the details of what Alistair has been said in that interview. Chin's not saying that to be mean. Chin is saying that because the very nature of the Shorb Show, Chin researches topics for current events at the end that are MMA related and he just fires them at R Brendan hoping that he knows about them or that he has like he's maybe seen it on social and then he can read through it in detail and Brendan can give his opinion the whole premise of the show is that Brendan doesn't know much about the topics so he can give you your his raw um, unfiltered off the cuff you know opinion that's basically the nature of the show that's the balance of it that other white guy does the switching and chin sits on the computer on the laptop with the news stories on tabs and goes through them. But he's so thin skinned. He gets offended a little bit and insulted at the inclination that he doesn't research the stories because he doesn't. He doesn't. Maybe he'll have a hot take and you repeat it from what Luke Thomas said. But for the most part, he doesn't really know what's going on. So he gets kind of offended. It's really funny how he got offended there. Really dumb. Ed, um, ah, and this word gets dicey. So he says, you know, I think he has three kids and he goes, I have a trans daughter. I blame the tablet. He was because I wasn't there and I'd come back. And so you know about all this then? Yeah. Yeah. yeah come on. 
I don't know. It's my job, Daddy. <laughs> so he would say, um, you know, he's on the Jackson podcast, and he's like, they're like, you have three kids, like, yeah, and one of them's uh, woke, and it's like, I, I don't know if I'd say that's woke, and he was like, because she was always on the tablet, so now she is transitioned to a he. She calls himself an, a man. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, I'm not too sure if Chin graduated high school. I'm not too sure if Chin graduated high school. I swear to God, I'm not too sure if Chin graduated high school. His transition to a he. She calls himself a, a man. She calls himself a, a man. She calls himself a, a man. <laughs> I'm not sure that man, this man, has graduated high school. I swear to God, <laughs> she calls himself. He's so dumb. He's so fucking dumb. She calls herself a man. My my thing with all this, as a parent, as a fighter, I I, I get the frustration of Alistair, right? You, it, it'd be it's it's a tough. By the way, it's not the fighter. Again, he's putting distance into this and trying to make himself sound better than Alex Alex over him. It's not about the comparison to a fighter. He should compare it to a comedian. Because the fighting thing, he didn't have kids, I think, during his fighting career. I'm not, if I'm certain, I think he had kids after. But the fighting thing isn't a good example. He should compare it to comedy. Because what Alex Overeem is basically saying in a roundabout way, he wasn't around. He was out fighting in all these different leagues around the world, doing his thing, becoming champion, losing the belt, knockouts, getting knocked down, whatever. And he feels like the time he spent away being Alex Overeem is what led his daughter to become trans. That's what he's saying. Brendan should identify with that a little bit because of his short-lived career as a stand-up comedian where he spent a lot of time away from home and he ran into some marital issues and some family issues. But because he wants to look like a beast of a dad, he won't be that honest and that open and make that point. Instead, he'll just act like, you, you, you get on his high horse because he's been playing baseball with his kid for the last six months and pretend like he was always there when he wasn't. You don't want that. For, you don't wish that upon anybody. Like if they were born that way and wired that way, it's not the tablet, you know, so it's not good. I can see how Alistair feels that way. But what you don't do is go on a big podcast and talk about it that way. You know, that's what you don't do. So you keep it in private. You keep your bigoted, homophobic opinions to your, to your household. That's what you do. You call your child a bunch of slurs under, the, under your roof, but you don't do it on a podcast. That's what you should do. Just do it at home. Don't do it in public. Because I would assume his daughter that's now... Uh, I think it's the oldest daughter, right? So Yeah. Um, I would assume she, she he, I'm not trying to yeah. disrespect. <laughs> she, he. <laughs> back, but I assume she, he she, feels. He. Is that the name? Is that the daughter's new name? She, he. he. I'm not trying she, to he, re yeah. disrespect, but I assume she, he, she, he. feels, uh, <laughs> you know, isolated already from her dad. And he goes on a public platform and says that, but you're not helping anybody here. Here we go. Here we go. Be that poor um girl guy you know it's awful girl guy she he girl guy <laughs> girl guy she he what's your name she he girl guy <laughs> it's not good and, and the and the key there too like being a parent i'll tell you this being a parent is the toughest job in the world if you're a good parent what does that even mean that's something that you've seen on like a tiktok video isn't it what does that even mean? What does that even mean? Being a good parent is only hard if you want to be a good... What? <laughs> what is that? Exactly, Koyla. That is some counselling fucking tidbit. Like, what is that? It's the toughest job in the world if you're a good parent and you're present. It takes a lot of work, man. And it's... <laughs> I love how he's just discovering... I love how he's just discovering how hard it is to actually 
look after, raise, and be present for your family. I love how he's just realizing this. 24-7. So when people go, ah, parenting's easy. Ah, you're not doing No one said that. No one's ever said parenting's easy. Maybe the people that, because I agree with Bill Burr, there is a lot of like doom mongering within the parent community. There's a lot of doom mongering. Oh, these years are trouble. Blah, 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 blah. Always negativity. It's, it's like the wife chat. Like guys that have, I hate, I hate, personally, I hate it. I hate dudes who talk about their wives or girlfriends negatively. It's like, it pisses me off. Oh, the old ball and chain. The old dude. The, shut up, bro. If, if this person's a ball and chain, leave them. Unshackle yourself. This con this being the way you talk about your partner is annoying. Like, go go away. Um, that's not the that's not like a manly thing. Like, just love the partner or don't. Like, fuck off. So most people, obviously, over overly negative about their kids. But, but, no one's ever said it's easy. Doing it right. You're not doing it, man. It's tough if you're present and you give a fuck. You know, so when he's like, she's always on the tablet, well, you're the dad. And he alluded to, you know, I, I was in America doing my thing. Hold on. I, if, I, if I'm bare. Big up, uh, Andrew. Haired it both ways, B. <laughs> I love how it said it as well. I love how it said it, haired. I love how it pronounced it. <laughs> I love it. The TTS actually said haired. Haired it both ways. <laughs> Big up, Andrew. <laughs> Both. I love it. Big up, Andrew. Bear there, who's the host. I love Bear. I don't want. You keep just kind of breezing over doing my thing. You run around doing my thing. Defi what's doing my thing? You mean not being a dad? Not being present? And now you're upset she's always on the tablet? I don't like this. Pl I, don't, I don't like this snitching. I don't like this snitching that he's doing. Because he, he's alluding. He's alluding to the fact that that little thing that Alice Overeem said was a throwaway thing. He said fighting, with whatever he said, right? Do my thing. He didn't say it, do my thing, like I was out there fucking. But Brendan is making it seem like Alice Overeem said, I was out there sucking and fucking. I don't like that. You have to keep some honor amongst cheaters. There has to be some brotherhood amongst it. Now that you've become a good dad, you can't sound now like snitching. No, 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 no. You were in the field with me. You were going to these whorehouses with me. You were going to rub and tugs with me. You were smashing all these chuckle fuckers with me. Don't now, don't now change your tune and start snitching. Don't snitch. That's on you, bud. That's on you. Now you're upset that she has these woke um, ideology, you know? Hey, Ooh, that's on you, bud. How do you pronounce ideology? How do you pronounce ideology again? How do you pronounce ideology? How on. How did he try to pronounce ideology? Um, ideology, you know? Oh, fucking hell, bro. I think, I'm starting to think he has a speech impediment. That was a, how, it's like you're swallowing something. Now you're upset that she has these woke um, ideology, you know? Hey, like, that's on you, bud. He thinks it's coming from the woke stuff that she sees on, on the, or he sees. Oh, I don't know. No, you got, you got to take accountability. You weren't there, bud. And now you're upset the way it went, it turned out. <laughs> I love how they're suggesting that the reason why this kid is trans is because the dad wasn't around. Uh, you can only be trans if you get on social media. <laughs> what? <laughs> the feed turns you gay. Is that what it is? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh my brain, bro. Oh, oh my brain. <laughs> my brain. He actually thinks he's having a big brain discussion here as well. The feed turns you gay. The feed. And he did say he he doesn't address that person as a he, he he just continues to call you know her or whatever very old school right very very old school from amsterdam i can understand that how he feels that way very old school from amsterdam bro what do you know about amsterdam and how they think very old school from amsterdam what do you know about that he's probably hurt but bud the, the word you missed all the work the ages from one to fucking ten you missed all the work didn't he miss all the work, technically? 
you missed the hardest part of the gig, but and now you're upset the way the results turned out? Honestly, I love the suggestion that this kid is only trans because Alistair Overeem was a UFC fighter and couldn't be the male influence. The overbearing male influence couldn't beat the gay out of this kid. Couldn't beat the queer out of this kid. <laughs> what? That's on you, man. Take accountability. Don't breeze over going, doing my thing. What the fuck does that mean? You mean not being present? I would come home she, and the mom would give her the tablet. Well, you're the dad. So if you weren't a fan of the tablet, which my kids don't get iPads for a reason, or have social media. <laughs> he doesn't give his kids social media because he doesn't want them to be gay. He's afraid Tiger might switch. So he, does, he doesn't have a, but he does have Instagram. If I'm not mistaken, somebody on the Friday Kids subreddit posted a screen grab of a profile. I think the mum set it up. I'm sure. I'm sure I've seen it. For both for both kids as well. I think Boston and Tiger both have an Instagram. I'm pretty sure the mum set it up. I'm pretty sure they have one. And the mum posts like pretending it's the kid, like with the captions and shit. You know, like when like those type of mums. Very, very spooky, sad shit. Like she posts like, oh my god, my mummy got me. Like I'm sure, I'm sure I've seen it. I'm sure I saw somebody post a screen grab of it on social. I was like, wow, wow, wow. So yeah, um, nah, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not putting on my screen. I'm not, I'm not putting some child Instagram on my screen. You have, you can do that in your own times, but I'm not putting a ten year old's Instagram on my screen. I refuse. But if you weren't a fan of your kid having a tablet, which you're right, the, the, good job, do something about it. Don't go do your thing, as he said, in America. Snitching. Again, being a parent, some people are like, ah, it's not too bad, man. Snitching. Yeah. When I hear that, I'm like, oh, you're a bad dad. Oh, you're a bad dad. All good. What? He what he said there? As he said, in America. Again, being a parent, some people are like, ah, it's not too bad, man. So if a dad tells him being a parent isn't difficult, because he's, he's one of those parents that complains. He's one of those parents that, oh my God, man, summer holidays, oh, oh my God, school run, oh, oh my God, football. Like, he complains about it. He's one of those complainers. So when he bumps into a regular dad who actually loves their kids and enjoys their company and doesn't complain and kind of likes hanging out with their kids, He's like, oh, you're a bad dad. What? Because I'm, I do my parenting different. Because I have a healthy relationship with my kid. Because we actually enjoy each other's company. Because I don't see them as like a time suck. I'm a bad parent. Yeah, when I hear that, I'm like, oh, you're a bad dad. Oh, you're a bad dad. All good, bad dad. Being a parent is the toughest job in the world if you put an effort in. It's nonstop. It's <laughs> By the way, Brendan has only realized how hard it is to be a parent because he was never present, which is not a bad thing. I think it's a good thing that he's got to this place. But the way he's got to this place is because his comedy career failed. He couldn't sell tickets to comedy clubs. He couldn't sell out the Laugh Factory. And because he's not a true comedian, he doesn't really care about the craft. He doesn't really care about the art form. He only was in it to be famous and make money. As soon as he stopped making money, as soon as he stopped selling tickets, he quit. And now he has all the time in the world to hang out with his family. He has nothing else to do. He tried to do the whole car thing. That hasn't really worked out too tough. He doesn't really play sports anymore. He doesn't really work out as much as he did before in the past. Doesn't really roll or trade anymore either. So he's around the house a lot more. And now everybody's moved to Texas. He has nothing to do. So now he's invented this whole persona. Beast of a dad now. Before it was about being into fish, cycling, driving cars, you know, whatever, running, uh, going on his Peloton. He has spoke about Peloton in a while. But now it's Beast of a Dad arc. And now he's only because of the last, what, 18 months, maybe two years, he's been present since he's quit stand-up. Now he's lecturing people how to parent. Could you imagine? Could you imagine the teremity, the guts, the gumption, the brass neck? Because you've been present for two years. 
now suddenly, suddenly now, you feel like you have the place to tell people how to parent or to look down upon them or to judge them. When you were doing the exact same thing, in this situation, he should have some sympathy for Alice Overeem. I know Alice Overeem sounds like a fucking bigot. I know Alice Overeem sounds like a fucking homophobe. But he should have some sympathy for Alice Overeem's way of thinking or how he got there because of his touring, being a famous UFC fighter, MMA fighter thing. Because of his stand-up thing. Because he's admitted himself that he cheated on his wife because of the stand-up career and stuff. But he's judging and pointing and looking down on him. Pretty sickening, to be fair. It's, a, it's, a, it's non-stop, man. You have great kids. It's a lot of work, dude. If you give a fuck. So he has to take accountability. You met what happened with the end result, but you weren't around to help that kid out. To try and figure out the feelings. Maybe there were signs. You weren't around. You were doing your thing. Take accountability, man. That's on you. And also, maybe, you know, she's trans. She said she identifies as trans, identifies as a he. But it's not 1999. If that's the way the kid feels, and that's where she, he, she's at right now, you got to embrace it, man. That's what it is. But you going on a public platform and degrading him and saying, oh, I, I just don't get down with that. But it's not about you, bud. It's about that kid. He's right there. That's a good point. Think how he feels. Think how he's feeling right now. His dad's Alistair Overeem went on a podcast, said, I, I refuse to call him he. It's not up to you, dude. You should have laid the groundwork years ago. <laughs> then, he, then he fucks it up. Then he fucks it up. You should have laid the groundwork years ago. The, what? The groundwork for what? The groundwork to make sure your kid doesn't turn out trans. I thought it was inside them. <laughs> what? <laughs> Honestly, this guy, the more he talks, the more... No wonder Rogan said he's a handler. You should have laid the groundwork to prevent your kid from being queer. <laughs> you should have... Like, what? You should have laid the ground. <laughs> exactly, exactly, John Smith. Sorry, buddy. You should have been more like me. Look at my kids, all killers. Look at my babies, all killers. <laughs> Honestly, Brendan's the best, bro. He's so out of his league in these conversations. It's brilliant. I love it. But to use your exact phrase, I was doing my thing. The fuck out of here. And I like Alistair Overeem. Ooh, get the fuck yeah. out of here. I love how he says these kind of things. Get the fuck out of here. But I like him. He's a good guy. No, you don't, bro. You don't like him. You're saying some mad things about him. It's a legend. Super complicated. It's not complicated, complicated Chin. It's not complicated. It's, it's, it's Oh, they're getting touchy now. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's not complicated because that's what it is. What's what makes it complicated is you not accepting the fact and taking accountability. You weren't there as a dad. And now you're upset the way that kid turned out. I get what he's meaning, but he's making it sound like if Alice Overeem was around, that kid wouldn't have turned out the way they turned out, which is an insane thing to say. An insane thing to say. That's bullshit. And now you're isolating that kid even more. It's a tough... We can say all we want. Gay Pride Month in June, transgender this, or we, we, loud and proud. I'm all cool. Do your thing. Do your thing. But anybody that chooses that life or was born in that body and chooses that, see? He said chooses that life, not born that way. He doesn't believe you can be born that way. He says chooses that life, which is wild. Don't get me wrong. On the left hand side, there are some people who are very. I would say deluded, but very naive to think that social media for some portion, very small portion of the population could have an influence into what their sexual orientation is or which way they swing. That could. But for the majority of people, you are born that way. I know for some people it's hard for them to kind of figure it out and get their minds around it. But no amount of throwing a ball to your boy is going to stop him if he ends up being gay it's not gonna prevent that 
You can't force your kid to be straight. It doesn't work that way. I swear to God, it doesn't. You know, you can have your preference. Cool, have your preference. It might not be politically correct thing to say. You might get stones thrown at you, but you can have your preference of what you prefer. But you don't force your kid to be straight because you made him play with fucking trucks. Because, oh my God. Oh my God. I just realized something. Brendan takes his kids to those car shows. Is that why he takes them there? Is that why Brendan takes his kids to those car shows? Oh my God. He's been taking his kids to those car shows for a while. He's trying to f make sure they don't be gay. Don't be gay. Don't be gay. And he force, he, he opens their eyes. Look at a Lamborghini. Look at a Ferrari. Stare at it. Stare at it. <laughs> Oh my God, he's so insane. That type of thinking is wild. He legitimately takes his kids to car shows because he wants to make sure they don't end up gay. Wow. Oh, we're a Porsche family, okay? Porsches equal straight. We're a Porsche family, okay? Porsche, okay? What I tell you, only straight people drive Ferraris. Big up, NJ. Kids be on their damn phones versus epic demic of fatherlessness. Exactly. Two of the hackiest bits exactly. ever devised. Yeah, exactly, exactly, they exactly. deserve each other. Exactly. Feel exactly. bad for their kids. Exactly. It also explains... <sighs> Big up, NJ Ranger. What's that saying about the company you keep? It's no surprise. I think somebody made a point in the stream chat. I forgot who's made a point. So please forgive me. I'm parroting what you said. But I also thought about it now. It's actually no surprise that they're all friends, isn't it? It's no surprise, isn't it? Rampage Jackson, Reem, I think is friends also with these guys. Brendan, it's no surprise they're all friends, isn't it? <laughs> like they're actual friends. Like, you know, it's no surprise. <laughs> and you don't want to look into, uh, you don't want to look into Rampage Jackson. I know Rampage Jackson is funny, but you don't want to look into his, uh, into his past, into his history, especially with the, with the women out there. It's very dicey. So it's no surprise they're all kind of friendly and bros and shit. Because, yeah. Number one, you know, them letting Alice Overeem talk about his daughter like that on their platform. If you were a stand-up guy, you wouldn't allow that anyway. You'd be like, eh, hey, you wouldn't allow that. You you would cut that out, or you, but you wouldn't, you'd either cut it out or you tell him to like, no, nah, we'll not do that on here. If you're really a beast of a dad and that's what you promoted, that's what you're about. You had that you were fucking on on fucking dad TikTok and you actually loved being a dad. You wouldn't let another dad come on your platform and disparage their kid like that. Even if even if you agreed, even if you had the same point of view as Alice Overeem, you would never let him do that on a public platform. The fact that you do, obviously. And then Brendan, a guy that just stopped cheating yesterday. Brendan, a guy which is <sighs> two things I hate the most. Number one, I hate the guy in a friendship group who cheats in front of you knowing full well that you know his girlfriend and then wants to get you involved in a lie makes you complicit i think that's super unfair and very bad mind very bad vibes i, I, I say almost evil that sort of stuff i hate that cool secondly i hate the person who was in cheating with you knowingly and then they just they they have a a crisis of confidence, or maybe they get caught, and then suddenly they become the fucking good husband police. They start judging you and looking down on you, Bruh, We were just doing dirt yesterday. Yesterday we were just doing dirt. Now all of a sudden you're you're trying to like get on your high horse. Fuck off. This top this type of topic. If you're him, you just say, look, I extend the force and prayers to them. Honestly, I don't like to see them. I don't like to see dads talk about their kids like this, but you know, I don't really have much to say. And you kind of like leave it. But you don't try and like be the morality police, try and act like you have principles and morals. Because he's only a, and again, he's, it's good he's a present dad. I'm happy Brendan's a present dad because the kids are going to, the ones that win. Brendan's kids are the ones that are going to win in the end because finally their dad's paying attention to them. Because before, all he cared about was the podcast and stand-up and touring and shit. It's a good thing that his stand-up career failed 
and he had to quit because he doesn't want to perform to half empty clubs because he's not in, really in it for the love of comedy. The the kids are going to win. The kids win because now the wife doesn't have to raise the kids by themselves. They don't have to be raised primarily by a nanny. The kids are going to win. So those kids are going to be fine in a way. But you just decided to be a good parent yesterday. Don't you dare now tell me how or judge me on how I'm parenting. You were the same guy yesterday. Where is the Zynga Thick Nation merch at? Oh, no way. That's never happening. Big up, big up High Def 10. That is never, never happening. I am never making merch that says Zynga Thick Nation. <laughs> it's never happening. It's never happening, High Def. Never happening. I hate, I, I hate the Zynga Nation shit. <laughs> It's so dumb. But you guys, you guys, you won't let it go. You won't let it go, man. He won't let me go. He won't let me go. Oh, big up, big up Luana. Luana, 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 I think her name is Luana. Big up Luana, man, wherever you are, hold your head up. Oh, God. wired that way it's not an easy fucking gig man nobody wants that gig it's a tough road you know how much further would have went if this bat alistair over him were the best of all time this badass it's like yeah it is what it is man i support her you don't need to paint your nails and do all this crazy shit you know see some of these dads doing <laughs> now he's going after Dwayne wade yo Brendan just started being a good dad yesterday and now he's going after all dads. Now he's a dad police. Brendan's a dad police now. Alice Oberyn, bad dad. Dwayne Wade, bad dad. You were just, you were only a good dad. And also, bear in mind, bear in mind, I also feel like he's dissing Brian Callan. There's going to come a part where I feel like he's dissing Brian Callan. I think how Ben Affleck feels right now. He's probably making fucking Argo or fucking Goodwill Hunting, and then the kid won't take the mask off, demanding more mask mandates. You can't be mad, dude. You weren't around. That's the that's how it goes. You weren't around. That kid needs guidance. You weren't there to provide guidance. Now this kid's doing some wild shit because they see it on the internet. Well, how'd they get the internet? Big up, big up, Koyla. Loki hates Callan. I believe too. And is it hate, like, I, I would describe Brendan's hate for Cannon like. I think he kind of has resentment for Callan and his upbringing. Him being like, because Brendan's, Brendan's dad's rich, but Callan's dad's rich, rich. Do you know what I mean? Like that guy set up like Citibank in the Middle East and shit, got the operations running. He's chairman of the board of some big financial um, banking organization that's that's worth billions and shit. Like, Callan's dad is, like, on another level to Brendan's dad. Even though Brendan's dad's rich, Callan's dad's wealthy. So I think Brendan has some contempt for Brian and that upbringing because that kind of upbringing that Callan has affords you to live like Callan. You can... Callan's basically... for give, Given his credits... I know he's got credits, but he's a career failure. Everything he's done, L, L, L. But he's been able to maintain that level of lifestyle and be in Hollywood still because of that. Com that that's what happens when you have wealthy parents. You have the ability to maybe take more chances and catch more L's and still live in amongst that LA life, Hollywood life, podcaster, content creator, and it doesn't really harm you. So I wonder if, if Brendan resents that. And also, Callan still has a stand-up career. He doesn't maybe sell as much tickets as he, as he would like. Maybe he's not doing theatres, but Callan still has a decent stand-up career. So given everything that's happened, that happens. And, and Callan has two families and probably still cheats. So he's been able to get away with it, you know, kind of. He's been able to, to get divorced, get a new wife, have new kids, still go on tour, still have a podcast, you know. So I wonder if that is part of it. He kind of resents Callan for that. Because he had to like grow up. 
he was maybe forced to like, you know, after the final, because people suggest that when he gave that girl the note on live stream, unfortunately, behind, in the background, people are suggesting that maybe that he bought his wife's mum that house, his mother-in-law, as a way to kind of make up for what he did. So maybe that was a final straw. Maybe the wife was like, hey, you have to quit stand-up or I'm divorcing you. And LA divorce laws are wild. She would have taken 50%, if not more. So he kind of was forced to be like, okay, cool, fuck it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop fucking baddies. So, but then you look at Callan, who's probably still fucking baddies, and you're like, Ugh. So maybe there's some there, because it, it'll come up a bit here. It's a bit spooky what he says. Who bought him the tablet? How to have access to it? And now you're upset? That's on you. But how much further would have gone for Alistair, who wasn't around when that kid was a, a baby, trying to figure the world out, clearly having some confusion? Cle <laughs> clearly. You see, he said it the right thing at the beginning. Now he says, if your kid turns out to be trans, they're confused. Spent too much time on social media. They didn't play with enough action figures. They didn't play with enough Hot Wheels. They weren't playing Call of Duty enough. That's why they ended up that way. Yo. Clearly looking for guidance. You're out doing your thing. There's clearly a separation if he's talking about him this way. How much further would have went? How, you, the gap's like this between you and your son right now. Your gap's like fucking like this because you were out doing your thing. How much further would have been if you would have just accepted some of it? Yeah, I, I, I don't understand it, man, but I support. I support him if that's what he wants to do. I, I just don't understand it. I don't. I'm old school. I'm from Amsterdam. Why does he keep saying Amsterdam? Is old? By the way, in case you're wondering, Amsterdam is quite liberal, kind of, but not really, to be honest. There are a lot of like um, anti-LGBTQ marches and stuff. There's a lot of violence against people from the LGBT community it happens there, which is weird, even though it's a very, it's a place where people go for hedonistic joys and indulgences it's also got a side to it that's also very rough um and very uh non-progressive let's just say that so i i know that because of my raving history and stuff and watching documentaries and going there and knowing people that have been there and stuff but i don't think brendan does i think he's just throwing that out just to say i don't think so but maybe he does who knows one of the best fighters to ever do it. I just can't understand it. But that's what he wants to do. I support him, you know. That would be the best way to go. If that's the way to handle it, even way. if you feel otherwise. Because what yeah. you're doing now is ostracizing. You're providing, you're creating. So basically lie that you accept the kid. Just lie. But if you don't feel like you expect them, just insult them when you get home. In more of a gap between you and your child. And you were That's the thing now, big old case of Moses. You know, you know, you know, Amsterdam residents are actually trying to stop, are actually trying to get the red light district closed down and moved away. Because unfortunately, the red light district, if you've ever been there, it's in a pretty um residential area. There's a lot of like houses around. So a lot of the local residents don't, don't like that. Um, and they have loads of beef with the people that run the red light district. So they're proposing a plan now to have the red light district relocated to another area. But obviously the other areas in Amsterdam also don't want the red light district. But the red light district brings in a lot of money for Amsterdam in general and just the nightlife scene. Amsterdam is a very interesting place. Very interesting place. Very interesting place. Because it's very liberal and open in some regards, but it's not, you know? Like, all the weed stuff is there, but you can't really smoke in the streets. You're not allowed to smoke in the streets. Oh, it's illegal there. Um, they kind of don't like tourism, even though tourism is a big driver for their economy there. It's a very interesting place over there. Very interesting. But one of the best things about it is that everyone speaks amazing English. So if you do come over there from parts of the UK or United States where people don't usually speak other languages, a, a good European destination to go to is definitely Amsterdam because everybody speaks, like, perfect English around as a father you take no accountability and going i was doing my thing motherfucker again and i like alistair over him i don't i don't condone this yeah that's the one game bread yeah that proposal you have seen a couple of videos on it as well what uh i forgot the, the the channel and i read the article about it the the new building they're proposing looks pretty cool though if they do if they do do it but i can't imagine other residents in other areas will be happy with it like a fucking 
you know, a Colosseum to fucking Gooning. I don't think they'd like that, but it looks fucking fabulous. This behavior, that's not good. The way he's handling it. You Fuck mean? no, dude. Yeah. So no, no. there's a tough balance though, right? Like, so he's, when you say doing his thing, he's going out making money for the family. So it's it's a tough balance, right? Look at, look at Brendan snitching. And what Chin's saying is right. What Chin's saying is right. Because that's what Brendan used to do. Brendan used to justify. And remember, if you know, if you know TFK history, you'll know this. Brendan used to say and kind of justify his touring schedule because he's making money. But when it started to when his touring started to trickle down, when the demand for him started to slow down, he changed his tune. Then he would start to gaslight people and go on pods like he went on Burt Kreischer's and basically was flexing that he doesn't tour as much because he has to want to be with his kids and I don't know how you guys do it. Basically, kind of sneak this in. Burt, Brian Callen, all these people for still touring and still being on the road despite having families. He's only not touring now because people don't want to watch him. If he can still sell tickets, tickets. If he can still sell tickets, he can still, he'll still be out there. You have to find out time to be with your kids and also make money for like he's the breadwinner of the family of course so that that's a tough like how do you handle that balance man it's tough but i think when he says doing my thing could mean he's living in the united states doing his thing you know probably out he's not with the mother that i don't know yeah, yeah i do so the see that snitching so he's snitching on alice over him Honestly, there's no honor. There's no honor amongst cheaters, man. There's no honor amongst cheaters. They probably spit roasted the girl together. And here he is saying, I know what doing your thing means. His thing, you know, probably out. He's not with the mother. That I don't know. Yeah, I do. So he's out with, you know, <laughs> not with the mom doing his thing. While she's back home trying to navigate like, man, we need to fuck some male energy in this fucking household. He's not around. That's projection, by the way. That's projection. That's probably what his wife told him. You see, he's only been present the last two years because his comedy career has come to a screeching halt. So much he had to quit, not quit. That's why he's saying all these things because these are probably the things that have been said to him. Hey, we need some male influence. Could you come back home, please? Remember, by the way, this is the same Brendan who when his wife had a miscarriage, unfortunately, he was on tour and didn't go back home to support her. She was posting all these sad pictures of herself at the clinic or wherever she was. And he was on tour, in a hot tub with all his boys, having a good time. Didn't give a fuck. Was, he almost seemed like he was inconvenienced by the whole thing. Come on, man. And now he suddenly plays with his kid baseball for a year and now he's proclaiming how good it is to be a parent and preaching about parenthood and fatherhood it's like come on bro you know it's a tough balance whether you're a professional athlete comic the something has to give something has to give <laughs> i love how he's talking like this as if he didn't do this himself he's now suggesting that every successful comedian every successful person in entertainment is a bad dad because they have to be you know they have to really go full steam ahead with their career. They can't be present. Honestly, this guy, this guy, man. Yeah. Well. And, but and, and here's the thing too. He, he's been fighting since he was young, dude. Yeah. So it's tough because. You know, exactly 730, exactly 730. Whether the kids are trans or not, they should have a male role model at home. Exactly. But he's saying it like, being a man, <laughs> having a real male role model prevents them from being trans. It's such a backwards way of like understanding what <laughs> what being a parent is. It's like, what? <laughs> what about just loving and supporting your kids? What about just being there? What about taking some of the slack? What about taking some of the work off from your wife? What about giving your nannies a break? <laughs> what about that? <laughs> Forget their sexual orientation. What about just being there and watching them grow into fucking people and humans and young adults and stuff? Like, what, like why not just be there? All this preventative parenting. So it's technically like he's only at the house. He's it's almost like he's all he's only at home to stop to stop his kid going from gay. It's, it's like he's only at home to stop his kid going gay pride. That's it. 
That's his role. His role is to make sure his kid doesn't go to gay pride. Fucking hell, bro. You know, heavy lies the crown. You want to be the best striker in the world. He got there. At what cost? At what cost? And was it worth it? So everyone that's successful, everybody that's successful that has a kid is a terrible parent. Cool. Because in order to be a successful athlete of any endeavor, professional, to be a successful comic, you have to be a bit of a narcissist. People are like, no, I'm a bit of a narcissist and very selfish. It's Isn't he talking about himself? That was exactly how he is or how he was. Come on, bro. Just what it takes to get to the top. It's just what it takes. I don't care who you are. That's what it takes to be an elite, elite person. You got to be a bit of a narcissist and believe it, the world revolves around you. You have a team around. <laughs> Is he talking about himself? He's literally talking about himself. <laughs> that they depend on you. They eat around you. They tell you what decisions to help make. It's a, it's a very... Don't get me wrong. He pretends he has a team. He laughs like he's got like a whole team managing him and working on his career. He laughs like that. It's just probably him and Lex and somebody and Chin. But, you know, come on. You're talking about yourself. Um, narcissist job. It is, man. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost you some things, like a relationship with your kids, your wife, your girlfriend. It, it's just, it's tough. And any of that high load, look, look at Navy SEALs. The ultimate badasses. You ever seen the divorce rate of Navy SEALs? I mean, divorce rates, period, are fucking bad. Navy, mm -mm. Look at Navy SEAL divorce rates. I love how he says that. Don't get me wrong. Navy SEAL divorce rates are high, but he has to look closer to home. Through the fucking roof. Mm. It takes a to be that elite, man. It, it, it's tough to give yourself to anything else. Oh, snap. 90%. What, what were we saying over, about divorce rates? Over 90%. You think I brought this up because it was fucking close? No, because divorce rates are already like 51%, right? For regular, just here's the problem with people. Those. That, so here's so those those are skewed. So you gotta be careful with that. So a lot of the the young. <laughs> this sounds like a guy that was researching divorce rates while they were potentially gonna be divorced themselves. They were being threatened with divorce because you know when you hear of gangsters like gangsters, street guys, hood dudes, talk about prison. They always have impeccable impeccable understanding and knowledge of the court system right they always have impeccable knowledge of the court system they know how policing works they know about their like they're very in tune because they're a career criminal they're in and out of the courts they're in and out of prison him having this factoid on deck and knowing all this shit about how the stats of um, divorce rates and da, 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 da. this is something that you learn when you're maybe researching divorce because you're worried your wife might divorce you and how much she might take. So you're doing your research. <laughs> I've never heard Brendan break down something like this, but you have to, you have to analyze it. Oy. Young listeners or the young people say, well, I don't believe in marriage. Hey, yo, big up, Andrew. Bob is stealing content from his therapist. Eh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, my God. You also spell therapist. Therapist, exactly. I thought I misheard it. He spelled it therapist. Exactly. I heard it both ways, B. For sure. For sure. This is definitely marriage counseling. This is definitely marriage counseling uh, content. <laughs> He's taking, he's taking topics from his marriage counselor. Come on, man. Up, the divorce up, rate's over 53% or 56%. Cool. Do you know a lot of those divorce rates wow, count? Wow. There's a lot of people that get married several times. They're counted into that statistics. There's a ton of people that get married. Clearly, it's they're the problem. They get married, <laughs> divorce, married, divorce, married, divorce. A, a lot of those numbers, you got to be careful with those numbers. Yo, isn't that shot at Brian Callen? Obviously, they're the problem. They get married, divorced, married, divorced. <laughs> That's Brian Callen. And you know what's funny about that? If you know your T-Fat K law, Brendan said on the podcast, 
when Brian got his divorce finalized, I'm not too sure if Brian left his wife or if his wife divorced him. Because I know technically she left him, but I don't know if they got to a point where they're like, you know what, this isn't working, let's just get divorced. And she initiated it. I'm not sure. But when he did get granted his divorce, and I might have to do a, a special Patreon episode on that actually, the whole divorce saga. But when he got granted his divorce, I remember the episode after it got done, or maybe uh, the episode after maybe the news leaks on TMZ, Brendan said to Brian on the podcast, he made it seem or intimated, oh, you're much better now. You seem so much happier. You're so much funnier on stage now. That's what he said to Brian on, on, on the pod. He almost made it seem like Brian's ex-wife was holding him back from being a great stand-up comedian or from flourishing in Hollywood. That's what he said. I remember it precisely. And Brian was sheepishly like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I'm much like... And then soon, and then the, the funny thing is, Brian right away got remarried. Maybe within a year, I think, he was in another relationship. And then he got married and now he's got two kids, which is wild, to be fair. He, he actually, I, Brian actually acts like a, like a N-I-G-G-A, if you think about it. Brian's got a lot of N-I-G-G-A tendencies. Leaves his first wife to pursue his own selfish desires while he's 50 years old or something then quickly gets into another relationship with a woman far younger than him and then impregnates her super fast and has two kids under five years old and he's 60. That is some N-I-G-G-A energy. Big up, Callan. Rates count. There, there's a lot of people that get married several times. They're counted into that statistics. There's a ton of people that get married. Clearly, it's they're the problem. They get married, divorced, married, divorced, married, divorced. A lot of those numbers, you got to be careful of those numbers. It's easy to hang your head on if you're single and you don't have a girlfriend. Ah. Hang your head on it. Hang your hat, you mean. Hold on. You said hang your head. Numbers, you got to be careful of those numbers. It's easy to hang your head on if you're single and you don't have a <laughs> It's easy to hang your head on it. It's easy to hang your head on it. A lot of those numbers, you got to be careful of those numbers. It's easy to hang your head on if you're single and you don't have a girlfriend. Hang your head on. It's easy to hang your head on. <laughs> I, I'm not getting married. Half the people just get divorced anyway. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. But no, this yeah, is, be careful with statistics. This is this is real. Nine, over ninety percent. Over ninety percent. Crazy. You know what's funny about that? If I'm not mistaken, the divorce rate for comedians is probably the same, or around the same. Most, most. Stand-up comedians, if you're successful especially, you're on tour a lot, or you're performing at night, or you're performing on the weekends. Any guy in the stream chat, if you've got a, if you've got a girlfriend or a wife, what's the one thing your girlfriend and wife hates? You not being available on the weekends. You not being available some evenings. You not being available all around all the time. So it's no surprise that comedians who tour and not around have some marital issues. So I like how he's talking from a point of, you know, supremacy and pointing his nose up at them. He's like, bro, your industry that you're in, the divorce rate is incredibly high too. Your co-host got divorced in part because of his career and maybe because he wasn't paying attention to his ex-wife and family, who knows? So it's wild that he's judging you know, Navy SEALs and judging MMA fighters, especially the ones who are trying to go championship. It's like, bruh, if you had the skills and the talent to be a champion, you also would have abandoned your family. If you were as funny as some of the funniest comedians, you also would have be still on tour now. Let's not, let's not, let's not lie. Come on, man. That's be Again, to be a Navy SEAL, well, and thank God for Navy SEALs. Yeah. But someone has to pay the cost. Anyway, I'll leave it there, my friends. I'll leave it there. Papa's redacted. Papa's judgy. Papa is now a beast of a dad and he's judging everybody. It's a shame. It's a blood clot shame.